chicken genetics. But today, let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Um, the basics behind chicken genetics are pretty similar to human genetics. So we know in humans that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So 23 from the male, 23 from the female, from our mother, from our father. And together we have 23 pairs. Um, those chromosomes, each one contains these segments called genes that code for specific um, parts of us. In chickens, it's pretty similar. So in chickens, there are 39 pairs of chromosomes, 39 from the rooster, 39 from the hen, and together they come together to give the chick all that it needs. So there are some differences, one being that chickens have 39 and humans have 23. Another difference is that we know in humans, of those 23 pairs, one of those pairs are sex chromosomes. So we get either, um, we get an X from our mother and then we either get an X or a Y from the father. XY being male, XX being female. But in chickens, it's actually switched. So of those 39 pairs, one of those pairs is still sex chromosomes. But in chickens, we use the letters W and Z. So in hens, they'll give a W or a Z and roosters will give Zs only. So roosters are ZZ and hens are WZ. So to their eggs, a hen will either give a W or a Z making that, that egg either a ZZ egg or male, a rooster, or WZ egg, meaning it's a female, because females are the ones who pass down the sex chromosomes. Um, the males always will pass down a Z. So that's the major difference in chickens. So that brings us to something that we in the chicken industry call sex linking. And we can, we can utilize this, this breeding technique also um, in our own backyard flocks. So that's all we need to learn about it. There's a lot of cool stuff, a lot of really interesting stuff with chickens that if you know it, you can use it. Um, they can be tools for us. So sex linking is breeding to make it easy to sex chicks out of the egg. So based on the color of their down feathers or the pattern of their down feathers, we know, okay, this chick is a pullet or this chick is a cockle, just based on, on how they look straight out of the egg. There's no need for vent sexing or anything complicated, no need to look at feather shapes. So we can use that tool as breeders and as flock owners ourselves, even in our backyards. Even if you have a small flock, you can use this method. We'll put out some more videos later on the specifics of sex linking as well as some examples. But the reality is that of those chromosomes, the pair that are the sex chromosomes, on those sex chromosomes, some of those genes we can actually see expressed phenotypically or physically in the chicken. So on those W and Z chromosomes, we can actually find certain genes that you can't find anywhere else on any of the other somatic chromosomes. Knowing that, we can breed for certain t characteristics that are going to be passed down. They're going to say this is definitely a hen or definitely a rooster. An example would be barring. Let's use pure breeds, heritage breeds. That's going to be a little bit easier. So let's say that you have a barred hen who is 100% a barred rock. Really obvious she's barred. And let's say we have a Rhodon and Red Rooster. So he's completely, he's just got the gold gene, no barring genes whatsoever. So he has two Zs, right? So on those two Zs, he only has genes for being gold, which is what you would call an, a Rhodon and Red Rooster. Whereas the hen we have, she has a barred gene on her Z. So the rooster, he has two Zs, just, just gold genes on those, no barring. The hen, um, on her one Z that she has, she only has the barred gene. She doesn't have the, the, the gold gene. She only has the barred gene. So when they breed, the eggs that they're gonna have, there's gonna be an egg that has WZ, that has a W from the hen, which does not have barring on it, and has a Z from the father, which doesn't have barring on it. And those are gonna be the hens, because the, we know that those are the WZs. And so they're gonna be solid colored. As a chick, what is this gonna look like? In this example, the chick is probably gonna be black, and they're not gonna have any other color on their down feathers, just little fluffy black chick, that's it. The males, on the other hand, are gonna have a Z from the mother, which we know has the barring gene, and a Z from the father, which does not have the barring gene. What we're gonna get is a heterozygous barred cockerel from that. What does barred look like in chicks? In this example, it's gonna be black down with a white spot on the head. So from the egg, we already know all the ones that are black with a dot on their head, cockerels we know it they have to be whereas the females are all going to be solid i will tell you 
if you have a heterozygous, like for instance, these cockles, when you breed them, they're not going to breed true in this way. So you have to know that your two chickens you're be beginning with are homozygous, recessive, and dominant, aka they're purebred. They're not going to have any, because if you do that, then some of your hens will be, um, uh, will may, may also be bored. Um, so that's something to remember. So the next thing we want to talk about is egg color. So if you know anything about chickens, if you're not new to this chicken world, you know a lot about egg colors. Even if you are new to the chicken world, you probably know a lot about egg colors. You've heard some stuff. You go to the supermarket, you see white eggs, you see brown eggs. Um, you've heard of people probably having blue and green eggs. So the genes for those, um, those egg colors are actually found also on these chromosomes. So those genes are going to tell the chicken's body whether to make brown eggs or green eggs or to some degree white eggs, but really the white is just an absence of pigment. So let's talk about pigments. The two pigments that contribute to egg color are going to be protoporphyrin, which is our brown pigment, and biliverdin, which is the green-blue pigment. And chickens can actually have both. So protoporphyrin is actually just deposited onto the outside of the shell. All eggshells are made of calcium carbonate. So that's just white. And so if the chicken has neither protoporphyrin or biliverdin, the egg's just going to be white, which is what you're going to see with leghorns, um, California whites, some other breeds. And then if the chicken has protoporphyrin, the egg is going to appear brown. And protoporphyrin is actually just deposited on the outside of the shell. So it's just a layer on top of that calcium carbonate. So the shell itself is still white. It's just deposited with a brown cover. And then biliverdin is actually different. We'll probably soon have a different video about the specifics on that because it's actually due to a retrovirus that was introduced into chickens, into ancient jungle fowl, rather, a really long time ago. Um, but that actually makes the shell itself blue or green. Blue is green. It kind of depends. So the shell itself in that case is going to have biliverdin in it, which actually changes the composition of the shell a little bit, which you can see in our egg, our egg videos. Um, the shell is going to be a little bit different, a little bit actually stronger in some cases because of that biliverdin. And biliverdin, by the way, comes from bile, and protoporphyrin is going to come from hemoglobin, those pigments. Um, and then if the chicken has genes that, that tell its body to put both, egg is actually going to be what we call um, an olive egg. We'll make some separate videos on all these specifically and even how to breed for those characteristics, but we can use these as tools. We can use this knowledge as a tool to breed for what we want, even in our own flocks. Another thing I want to talk about is patterns. So patterns are actually really important in chickens too. And in the case we were talking about earlier with um, the barred chicken example, that's a pattern. Barring is just a pattern. It's actually which are just all over the board. We'll try to make separate videos for each one, talk about the genetics behind it, talk about homozygous, heterozygous, etc. Um, the breed standards behind some of those. Another thing is size. Um, this is more when we're talking about production or maybe if you use your chickens for meat, there are also genes that control egg size. There are genes that control the size of the chicken itself. In the market, we're going to see people selecting chickens who are larger because they want to have, of course, more meat on the chicken. Um, and there's some, some ethics in some of these things as well that we can talk about and get into. Last but not least, I want to talk about health. So as we're breeding our, even our own backyard flocks, as we brew roosters and hens, we really need to be good stewards of the animals we've been given. And we want to make sure that we're being smart and how we breed animals and make sure that we only breed healthy animals. And understanding chicken genetics can help us to make better decisions as we breed and not just breed for looks, not just breed for size, not just breed for patterns, not just breed for egg color, but also to breed for stronger, healthier chickens. If you are breeding a specific breed and you're going to be trying to improve that breed, we may talk about that some as well. In addition to just talking about in your own flock, can you use these things to breed for certain characteristics in your chickens? But let's just get started. This is the first in a series on chicken genetics, so stay tuned. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, turn on your notifications so you know when a new one is dropped. Hopefully this is going to help all of us. You'd be surprised at how much this can help. So thanks again. This is Anna from the Hen Twins. Stay tuned.